Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Have Gun, Will Travel. Original air date is November 29th, 1959, and the title is Bitter Vengeance. Let's get into it, and I hope you enjoy. I don't need my gun to protect myself from you, because the hatred that has diseased your heart will cause your own death. Have Gun, Will Travel, starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. Mr. Paladin, Mr. Paladin. He's over here, hey boy. Oh, there you are, sir. Oh, excuse me. Do not wish to interrupt your lunch. No, no, that's all right, hey boy. I just finished. What is it? Ah, oh, a lady wishes to see you. Oh? Who is she? The Miss Janet Stocker. Stocker? Ah, she has been with you to that hotel for one week, so very nice lady. Well. Where is she, hey boy? She waits in lobby. Follow me, please. I show you. There she is, Mr. Paladin. Over there. The lady who sits in chair. Thank you, eh, boy? Oh, yes, sir. Um, Miss Stalker? Yes? My name is Paladin. Oh, yes, Mr. Paladin. I'm so happy to meet you. Please, sit down. Thank you. I, uh, I know you must be curious as to why I have to see you. A request from a charming lady always piques the curiosity, Miss Stalker. Then I'll not waste time, Mr. Paladin. I want you to take me to a place called Tacopa, California. Tacopa? Mm-hmm. It's where I was born. I must get back. Well, why do you need me to go with you? Tacopa is a small town in the middle of the Mojave Desert. Neither the railroad nor the stage lines have routes that go anywhere near there. A woman couldn't make the trip alone. I see. I'll pay you $500 to get me there safely. 500 Well... You must have a very special reason for wanting to go to Tacopa, Miss Snucker. I have, Mr. Paladin. It's where I'm going to die. Janet Stalker looked healthy and strong, but she told me she was ill with an incurable disease. And the doctors had given her only a short time to live. She said she'd been seeing specialists in San Francisco, but the results were the same. So accepting her fate, she wished to return to her place of birth and live out her remaining days among friends and relatives. I agreed to take her, and we left the next day. One week later, we made camp among the Joshua trees, deep in the Mojave Desert, five days' ride from Tacopa. The desert's a lonely place at night, isn't it, Mr. Paladin? The desert is lonely any time. It's like a woman without a man. That's the kind of loneliness it is. Hmm. I suppose. Have you ever been alone, Mr. Paladin? Really alone? Oh, I guess everyone has, Miss Stalker, one time or another. I mean, have you ever had someone taken from you? Someone you love very much? We all have our painful experiences, Miss Stalker. Mm. I had a man once. Maybe he wasn't the best man in the world, but he was mine. And he loved me. The first time he saw me, he walked right up to me. Put his arms around me and said, you're mine. And I was. Until he was killed. I'm sorry. Are you, Mr. Paladin? I don't think so. I don't think you know how it is. 
Well, Alan, uh, hold it uh, right there. You make a move and I'll blow a hole clean through you. That's fine. Well, we got him, didn't we, Jan girl? Mm-hmm. We got that murdering pallet. Yes. Hey, what is this? Oh, you'll find out soon enough. Take his gun, Jan. <laughs> He's got a derringer, too, Doke. I've seen it. Get it. Hey, would you mind telling me what this is all about, Miss Stocker? It isn't Miss, it's Missy. Mrs. Janet Stocker Cully. Does that mean anything to you? Is it supposed to? It should. Since you murdered a man by that name. Cully? That's right. Byron Cully, my husband. Well, what makes you think I murdered your husband? You did, Paladin. And now you don't even remember his name. No. Byron Cully. Virginia City. Two years ago... Yeah. yeah, I remember now. But it wasn't murder. He was drunk. He drew his gun and tried to kill me. There were at least 15 witnesses. You're a dirty liar, Paladin. You murdered him. What's your concern in this? My name's Cully, too. Byron was my brother. You take it two years to set up this trap? I was in jail when it happened. Janet, she come and told me about it. And I swore I was going to get the man who'd done it. All right, so what do you do now? You shoot me? Leave me for the buzzards? Oh, it ain't that easy, Paladin. You're gonna die slow and hard. I had me a long time to think about it. We cooked up that story about Janet being sick and ready to die just so we could get you out here on the desert. What's so special about the desert? You know how long a man can last on this desert without water. You tell me. One, maybe two days at the most. So? So tomorrow morning... You start walking, Paladin, without food or water. But don't you worry now, we won't be far behind. Just about ten feet riding the horses and drinking the water. And when you fall down and start begging for a drink, you think about my brother. You think about him real good. If you're suffering from a cold, medical authorities advise, whenever possible, go to bed when you first feel a cold coming on. Keep comfortably warm and protected from direct drafts and changing temperatures. Drink plenty of liquids, water, soup, milk, and fruit juices. And here's another important health tip. When you have a cold and need a laxative, that's the time to rely on gentle X-lax. Pleasant-tasting, chocolated X-lax helps you toward your normal regularity gently overnight. X-Lax works where nature wants, in the lower tract, not the stomach. Taken at bedtime, X-Lax gives you the closest thing to natural action the next morning, without upset, without discomfort. And X-Lax is so effective, it continues to help. Seldom, if ever, do you need to take it again the next day. So when you have a cold and suffer constipation too, take X-Lax, a medicine you can use with complete confidence. X-Lax helps you toward your normal regularity, gently, overnight. X-Lax. On the Mojave Desert, the sun can bake your brains, make you see things that aren't there. Your tongue swells in your throat until you can hardly talk, and the buzzards start their silent watch. Doak Cully enjoyed his role of torturer and constantly taunted me about water as I walked unsteadily across the hot, dry sand. Many times, Janet bitterly reminded me of her dead husband. But as the sun rose higher, she spoke less of it. And by late afternoon, she was strangely silent. Somehow, I managed to stagger through that first day. But when Doak made camp that night, tying me hand and foot, I knew I couldn't last another day without water. Paladin. Mm. Paladin. Mm. Stokes asleep. I'm going to cut you loose. Water. 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 Water.
But I've cut you free. So if you die now, it won't be by my hand. No. Why, Jan? Why did you do it? I don't know. It wasn't like I expected. Oh, and now get out. Janet. Doke. Doke is going to be wild mad when he finds out. You better come with me. Get out, Paladin. Now, ain't that coat? <laughs> what? And, girl, I told you I wanted to watch him die. And you were going to turn him loose. Uh, you dirty little... <laughs> Why, you... You missed me, Doak. You missed me. No, I dropped that gun. Dropped it. Dropped it. Here. Now, I've got the gun now, Doak. You'll do it, Jesse. Hey, stop. Helen. Yeah. You all right, Janet? I don't know. He hit me right in the face. Yeah. Did, did he get away? I think so. I I shot at him, but I couldn't see him very well in the dark. Uh, he'll come back. I know he will. Oh, maybe not. I've got his gun. Mine's over there in the bedroll. But there's a rifle in his saddle boot. In the saddle? Huh? Oh, the horses. He'll be after the horses. Yeah. Yeah. No way! Paladin. They're gone. Paladin, you'll die out here. We can't travel without horses. We're four days from the nearest town. What do we do? We'll have to walk. Dandruff bothers most men, most women, too. So listen. Today, you can get rid of embarrassing dandruff in just three minutes. Yes, with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. That's not all. Using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch Shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And never forget, gentle Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. I bathed Janet's cut face with a very small amount of the precious water and told her we'd have to travel at night to conserve every ounce of strength. She said she felt up to it, so we walked the rest of that night. She held up very well the first few hours, but as daylight approached and cast its eerie shadows over the desolate area, the strain began to tell. She insisted on continuing, however, and by the time the heat became unbearable, we were at the base of the Panamint Mountain. And there, among some large rocks, we took shelter from the blistering sun. Ooh. Well, we did better than I hoped. Once we get over these mountains, we're, we're almost there. We won't make it. You know we won't. We're going to die here. Now look, Janet, crying won't help. I can't help it. I'm so ashamed. Ashamed? <laughs> of what? Everything, what I've done. Everything. Is that why you cut me loose last night? I don't know, I suppose. I loved my husband so, and when you killed him, I hated you. All I wanted to do was hurt you the way you'd hurt me. Yeah, I didn't know how it would be. Well, the important thing is that you didn't go through with it. But I might as well have. You're going to die just the same. Oh, now, wait a minute. Hmm? Maybe neither of us will. Hmm? Look. Oh, look out there. Hey. Well, that's Duke. Uh-huh. 
What's he doing? He's following our tracks. Probably wants to make sure we die. What do we do? We've got to get one of those horses. How? How can we? Well, if we're lucky, he won't notice us until he's within pistol range. What if he sees us before then? Then he's got us. My gun won't be effective against his rifle at this distance, but if he gets close enough... Oh, he's got to. Now keep your head down. Down. Sorry. Just keep it. Paladin. He's got to come closer. He's got to. Yeah. Almost now. Be quiet. Don't, don't, don't make a sound. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's going to leave. Hi, right, Janet. No. Janet. You've got to come closer. Janet, get down. No. Janet. Janet. Uh, uh, he, he shot me. Doke shot me. Here. Uh, Let me move you back uh, into the shade. No. Oh, no. Huh? Oh, don't move me. My back. It's all numb. Well, you're going to be all right. I'll fix up something to carry you in. Did you get him, Paladin? Did you kill Dope? Yes. I'm glad. Maybe now it won't hurt. It won't be so bad to die. Oh, now, Janet. No, no, no. You're not going to die. Remember, Paladin? I can stand in this car. I told you. I didn't have long to live. Remember? Remember? Yes, Janet. I remember. Amigo, you want to know about stereo phonographs? Listen to my last bullfight on ordinary stereo. Ole! But now, Colombia Stereo won. <laughs> ah, there is a corrida de toros. Real life like magnifica. There is such a big difference in stereo phonographs. With most, all you get is a couple of speakers shooting in different directions. But with Colombia, Ah, hombre, you get fantastic stereo projection. What it does is to send circles of sound sweeping through every inch of a room. You are surrounded with live sound, live feeling, live passion. Ole, ole! How they cheered me. Ask your Columbia phonograph dealer to demonstrate stereo one by Columbia. Prices start as low as thirty-nine ninety-five for portables, one twenty-nine ninety-five for consoles. El picador, who let that bull out? Oh, hey, boy, sad about you treat me, Paladin. Oh, it was not a good thing. No, it wasn't, hey, boy. No, sir. The man, uh, Doc, he had much hate. Yes, he died with it. Oh, yes, sir. Hey, are uh, you going into uh, Colonel Hodges' room to play chess now, Mr. Paladin? That's right. Uh huh. Uh, think hey boy will play chess too. Oh? Yes, sir. You, uh. Have seen Miss Wong? No, no, I haven't, hey boy. Oh. I find her. Ask her to play chess. All right. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, hey boy. Miss 
long. Oh, it is. Uh, is Hayboy gone? Yes, he's gone. But what are you doing hiding in the broom closet? Oh, not want Hayboy to find me. Why not? Oh, all week now, every time Hayboy see Miss Wong, he want to play chess. Well, what's wrong with that? I thought you liked to be with Hayboy. Is that so? Well, then. Oh, when he play chess, it's different. He's very serious. Not laugh, not talk. Oh, well, now, Miss Wong, chess is not a game for laughing and talking. Oh, it's not that, Mr. Paladin. Hayboy gets angry. Angry? Angry. Why? Because Miss Wong always wins. Always? <laughs> yes, uh, always. Oh, brother, this miserable cold and my sinuses. Haven't you heard about Dristan? Dristan decongestant tablets not only help drain all eight sinus cavities, critical areas of cold's infection, but circulating through the blood... Dristan reaches all congested areas. In one fast-acting, uncoated, three-layer tablet, Dristan, for the first time, combines a decongestant to shrink all swollen membranes, relieve pressure and pain, an exclusive anti-allergent to help keep breathing passages dry and clear, pain relievers to ease body aches, reduce fever, vitamin C to help build body resistance. This is Dristan. Today, Dristan is widely imitated. But the exclusive Dristan formula cannot be duplicated. For real relief from cold's misery and sinus congestion, there is nothing, nothing like Dristan decongestant tablets. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hayboy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Barney Phillips and Gene Bates. This is Hugh Douglas, inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Join in the conversation by going to otrwesterns.com slash Discord. And don't forget to send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. This episode is copyright under the attribution, not commercial, share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and again, thanks for listening.